Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his love that he has shown toward us. I could truly say if it had not been for the Lord on our side, mm -hmm. yes. there's no telling where we would be. We often say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, your soul ought to cry out hallelujah and begin to praise God for saving you. Because salvation is key to our lives. The scripture tells and talks about we ought to rejoice when one transitions to the Lord as opposed to one being born in this world. So our, our mission in life should be, as we all know, to, to live again. Amen. Amen. To live again, to live forever. So we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. I uh, want to remember many women and children everywhere, everywhere. I uh, remember the bereaved families, uh, yeah. especially I uh, remember the Morris family. Dealing with the loss of a great woman of God, Amen. Uh, Sister Mary uh, Helen Morris. Amen. Amen. Let us pray uh, for that family and pray one for another and all others Amen. that have lost loved ones uh, that are going through. I realize, you know, it ain't just one day, it's, it's a grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the Lord is able to take us through those processes. He said, blessed are ye that mourn, and ye shall be comforted. And the Lord knows how to comfort us. I believe in my own mind that one of the closest times that he's near us uh, is in death. You know, especially when someone else is transitioning, and then when we are dealing with the aftermath of it. I believe because that's an opportunity for people uh, that grieve and go through. It's an opportunity for them to turn to the Lord and be saved. You know? So I believe that uh, the Lord draws nearer and closer to individuals at that particular time. Um, are there any other particular prayer requests before we go before the Lord? Sis, man. Pray to the Lord. I just pray to the Lord. Pray for me that God has a perfect will be done in my life, that I walk upright and do those things that please Him. Pray for my son in a special way. Um, just pray that the Lord continue to touch the minds of the medical staff to give him the right, um, it's almost like they need to pull a balance mm -hmm. of um, medication to allow his heart to function the way it's supposed to without overdoing his kidneys yes. or his liver. So just pray that the Lord continue to give um, the medical people a mind to be able to correlate the medications the way they um, should. Only God can do those things. Yes. Only yes. God, you know, they practice in medicine, <laughs> but he has perfected this yes. thing. Yes. And so um, I'm just asking that, you know, my son even have a spirit of peace yes. while he's going through what he's going through. Pray for my daughters and my granddaughter in a special way. Pray for my grandson. Um, my sister-in-law comes to mind. She went through uh, chemo and radiation, and now she seems to be having some stomach issues. And uh, they say that they don't know what's going on, but God knows what's going oh, on. Yeah. So I'm asking that you all would agree with me in prayer that the Lord bless and bring complete and total healing to her. I know that. I kind of feel like the Lord is drawing her and my brother, mm. you know, because they have strayed away. Yeah. And the Lord has a way of drawing you back. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I believe that the Lord may be drawing them back. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that they be saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost with the rest of our loved ones that's out there, that the Lord give them a mind to be saved our young people, gun violence in our city like never before. Yes. That the Lord um, would encamp his angels around the city, mm -hmm. encamp his angels around the mayor. The Bible tells us to pray for those that are in those positions. Right. Pray for our mayor and the city, the city council, the 
God, we move and do what needs to be done that you're police for. Pray for this house. Yes. In Jesus' name, Pastor and his family. Amen. Beautiful. Mother David. I have uh, three brother-in-laws, and their health is pretty, you know, failing them pretty bad. They're in pretty bad shape, that's why. So continue praying for them that yes. God will touch their bodies and the ones that are not saved, that he is saved. Give them a mind to be saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Bible tells us to cry loud and spare not. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And these are all prayer requests that the, the Lord is pleased with and He's able to uh, fulfill. <laughs> Nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Nothing too hard for the Lord. All right. Well, let the church stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to worship and give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every request that's been made known. Remember, men and women and children everywhere, Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Send forth your anointing, send forth your grace and your strength. Bless each and every request, Lord. Bless our children. Bless our loved ones and our family members, Lord. Send forth healing. Send forth deliverance. Lord, we will remember our community, our community leaders, as it has already been stated, put before thee, and our youth and our children, Lord. We ask that you're blessed by your power, by your might, and through the Holy Ghost anointing. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on tonight. Send forth a word, a word of strength, a word of encouragement. Our Lord, a word that we need, Lord, hallelujah, to correct us, to help us to walk in your ways. Grant revelation, grant a, a ready mind in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for a rainbow word, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And remember Latanya in your prayers, too, I forgot. I'm sorry? Remember Latanya, Sister Latanya. Yes. Continue touching her body. Yes. Lord, we ask you to bless this with Tanya, Lord. Touch her body, touch her mind. Continue to strengthen her. In Jesus' name, save her to the uttermost. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is real. The Lord is real. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want you to turn with me. Crosby, if you read from it uh, in the book of Romans, very familiar passages of scripture, Romans chapter number 12. Amen. And uh, we're going here for a specific reason, a particular reason that the Lord has put in our hearts, and we want to look at uh, transformation transformation and uh, literally kind of what that entails and what that looks like uh, in, in, in the mind and the eyes of God because we can we can have some supposition about it I have our own thoughts ideas and opinions but uh, the only opinion that really matters is God's opinion <laughs> Thank you. you can have your own ideas <laughs> Your ideas may be relevant, but the only opinion that really matters is God. Amen. And uh, when we come to realize that, uh, it'll help us cut through a lot of confusion. Amen. Cut through a lot of confusion. When Job uh, was speaking in his own affliction, and he was questioning God, and God got through with him asking, where were you, Job? Uh, and then Job said, I spoke once, but I will speak again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But when, when it comes, when it's all said and done, amen, God's counsel shall always stand. And it's the counsel that is, that, is, that is always prevalent and most important. Amen? So in, in this book of Romans, in this book of Romans to this particular point, uh, Paul had outlined, uh, it's a beautiful uh, letter, but it's, a, it's, a, it's also a document uh, written to 
the saints of God. And Paul, in the beginning, uh, up to this point, uses a lot of therefore, uses a lot of therefore. And uh, uh, as he uses a lot of therefores, he's, he's communicating in, in a way that are pivotal moments uh, in the life of the child of God. And Paul, uh, he literally outlined in the book of Romans, uh, before we get to this point, a lot of doctrines, a lot of doctrines, he gave a lot of doctrines. He talked about the doctrine of condemnation, yes. that how we are all concluded under sin, uh, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, then he taught about the doctrine of justification, how we're all justified in Christ, yes. justified in Christ. Then he talked about the doctrine of sanctification, yes. how, how we ought to live our lives, how we are set apart, sanctified, uh, meet for the master's use. He talked about that, then gave doctrines on that. And doctrinal teaching is necessary because it establishes us as as members of the kingdom of God. Then he, the last doctrine that he talked about up to this point was the doctrine of glorification. Amen. And how we're going to be glorified. Amen. I can't wait for that. Uh, we want to be glorified in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This mortal is going to put on immortality. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption. Amen. And we're going to receive a glorified body. Yes. Amen. Those are doctrines. Those are doctrines that the Lord had given unto him to teach unto us. Amen. So at this, therefore, in the book of Romans, chapter number 12, he's pivoted, if you allow me to say it, to uh, uh, with, with doctrine, you also have to have a practical application Amen. on how to live it out. Amen. Amen. You just can't have doctrine uh, which is teaching without practical application Amen. on how to live this thing out. Amen. And that's what uh, this therefore with, uh, we're about. Can you read that first verse there? Thank you, Jesus. I beseech you therefore, brethren, uh -huh. by the mercies of God, yes. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God, yes. which is your reasonable service. Read that second verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh -huh. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, Paul is saying uh, at that first verse, uh, 12 and 1, I beseech ye therefore, brother. And, and that therefore, once again, now he's moving away from the doctrinal teaching. Now he's talking now about practical living. Amen? Uh, if, you, if you read and study Paul's epistles, uh, he always talks about doctrine. Then he uh, inserts practical living. Because you, you can have a whole lot of book knowledge, a whole lot of knowledge, but if you don't know how to apply it, uh, which is wisdom, which is the skill to live it, then it profits you nothing. It profited you nothing. You got to know the word and also be able to live it. Amen. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to live it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's just hold that and just go to uh, St. John chapter 13 and uh, verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to drive this point home. Hallelujah. Thank you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to I want to be able to live this thing. Amen. I want to be able to live it. There's a, a lot of great teachers of the word of God. I've sat under some great teachers and they taught me doctrine, you know, and, and uh, the ones that uh, taught me how to practically live this word of God uh, 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 are valuable. And, and uh, how can I say it? Help me here, Holy Ghost. They're, they're, they're valuable to the body of Christ. I've had some teachers that taught me holiness 
but didn't teach me how to live fully. Next. Amen? And, and then when those individuals that, that taught me how to live it uh, came into play, you know, I literally, I'm going to be honest with you, I had, I had, I had some uh, questions in my mind. I had to go to the Lord and, and seek out the Lord, and the Lord had to help me. Amen? And say that, that, that yeah, you, you had the doctrinal information, and you got that down, but, but now I'm trying to give you the practical information on how to live it. Amen? How to live it. Huh? Thank you, Lord. It's one thing to know how to treat your children and how to, how to, how to be saved and treat your children, but it's another thing to uh, know how to apply God's word uh, to your family life. Y'all with me? To your holy life. The Bible teaches us to be temperate in all things. Amen? Uh, you got to have a balance. You follow? Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Gotta have a balance, gotta live this thing in a practical way. Huh? My mother-in-law, she 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 often said, you know, uh, y'all heard that expression, uh, so heavenly minded, no earthly good. <laughs> y'all heard that before. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, you can you can be so super spiritual, huh, but miss out on how to apply it in a practical way. Uh, and, and the Lord never wants you to. That's what turned. That's why, man, I'm getting excited. That's why Jesus' ministry was so dynamic. Yeah. Amen. He taught them how to live this thing. Yeah. Amen. How to apply. Uh, that's why he, they said that his, he, what he taught, uh, they were astonished uh, at his doctrine. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because he applied both uh, teaching and practical living. That's why, where Paul got his from. Amen. When he teaches. Uh, read that verse. Uh, we in St. John chapter 13. And what verse? 17. 17. Read. What does it say? If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Amen. Now, now that's the practicality uh, of, of the word of God. If you know it, uh, what brings you happiness and joy is if what? You do it. Amen. That's what brings you the happiness. That's what brings you the joy. It's one thing to know the word of God, uh, but it's another thing to be able to perform it, to be able to do it. Amen? Jesus, he taught also in the, uh, 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 in the uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he taught that, that an individual who, who knows his word and doeth it not, so to speak, I'm paraphrasing, it's going to be least in the kingdom. But those that, that know it and teach it and do it, they're going to be great uh, in the kingdom. Amen? It's about doing the word of God. Read that verse again. If you know these things. If you know these things. Know if we are ye, if we do this. Amen. If you know the word of God, great happiness comes from doing. Amen? from doing. The scripture even bears it out, even about faith. Amen? Uh, talks about faith. Thank you, Lord. Is without works is what? Dead. Amen? You gotta have some works to your faith. You gotta, you gotta live this thing. Amen? In a practical way. <laughs> Hallelujah. In a practical way. Y'all understand what I mean by in a practical way? Uh, applying God's word to your daily life. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Applying the doctrine to your uh, uh, daily life. Thank you, Lord. Not, 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 not just knowing it, but doing it. Amen? And that's what Paul is pivoting. Let's go back over uh, to the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Amen? So Paul taught doctrine, and now he's focusing in on, once again, the practical side of living. You gotta be able to live this thing. Amen? You gotta be able to live it in accordance with the works of God. All right? Read uh, uh, 12 and 1 again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, uh -huh. by the mercies of God, yes. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. All right? So he says, 
I beseech ye therefore, based on everything that he has taught up to this point, he's begging us. Amen? Uh, notice what he says, I beseech ye therefore, brothers. Uh, he's talking to the saints. Uh, a lot of people uh, apply sinners, try to apply the word of God to their life, the blessings of God to their life, and it doesn't apply to them until they get saved. Uh, doesn't apply until they get saved. Got to be brethren. Got to be in the body of Christ. Baptized believers. That's why, you know, one of the, uh, 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 I don't want to say, uh, one of the scriptures that, that, you know, when I'm talking to unsaved folk, they say, uh, yeah, you know, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are decalled according to the purpose. Amen. And that scripture is true. It's, 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 it's true. But, but it only applies to, to the same. Amen. It, it only applies to the same. The promises of God that, that, uh, that are connected to, 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 to those types of scriptures are connected to the same. You know, there's some promises that he gives to the sinner. If you repent, <laughs> you know, he'll save you. He'll forgive you. <laughs> He's faithful and just. Amen. Um, if, he, if you do that, that's a promise. Amen. But, but when it comes down to holiness, when it comes down to righteousness and, and the promises of God, it, it applies to the brethren. Amen. To the Christ, the household of faith. Amen. We've got some great and precious promises. So, uh, we live and survive by the promises of God. Am I right? Hallelujah, my God. Every day, thank you, I thank God for his brand new mercy. Uh, every day, I thank God for his promises, his great and precious promises. Am I, am I right? Hallelujah, I thank God. Hallelujah, that, that Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Amen. I personalize that. Amen. Saying that where I am, huh, there ye will be also. Now that's a promise. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. So he said, let not your heart be troubled. Huh? Uh, you believe in God? Huh? He said, believe also in me. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. We, can, we, we build our lives and our hopes upon the promises of God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And notice what he said. He says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, uh, by what? The mercies of God. Amen. Yeah. By God's mercy. Yeah. I'm begging you, uh, uh, apostolic brethren, in the body of Christ, by the mercies of God. Yeah. He's pleading with us. Amen. To, to help us to, to see and to understand what he's about to teach. Amen? About practical living. Yeah. Amen? We have to live this thing. Yes. Amen? You've got to live this thing. You've got to put the word of God into your daily practice. Yes. Amen? Yes. Uh, you've got to live. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes. Uh, you, can't, you can't not practice this word. Amen? You've got to practice it to where it becomes a second nature to you. Amen? Where it becomes your, 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 uh, uh, your habit. Amen? It has to become your habit. Hallelujah. A lot of, a lot of things, uh, uh, when you come into holiness and righteousness, we, we, we have to retrain ourselves. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and, and you have to be conscious of, of the process of retraining. Uh, people who come into the body of Christ initially, uh, you see them uh, 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 cuss. You see them tell a lie. Amen. They knew. Amen. That's, that was their habit. That's what they did. Uh, you see them gossip. Amen. Yeah. Uh, but 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 then should you know it as you what continue on? Yeah. Amen. Uh, that's what that doctrine of sanctification tells us. Amen. You've got to go through a process. Amen. Of transformation and renewal. 
Mother of Jesus? Is it, is it possible for the word to be engrafted in us? Yes. And then in that way it will produce. <laughs> yes. It, that's, 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 that's what he teaches. Amen. That, and, and, and when that, uh, uh, when, when that word, uh, uh, first of all, we get engrafted into the body. Amen. And then that word, because we, Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Uh, every branch that sent me does what? Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Amen. And, and as you, as you live, your life becomes productive. Uh, now notice, I'm glad she said that. Your life becomes productive in the body of Christ. Amen. You have productivity in the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. They, they, you, they shall know you uh, by your works. Huh? Uh, 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 John put it this way. He said, they, they were not of us uh, because they didn't continue. Amen. And you know, you've got to, you got to continue in this word and then and then produce. Amen. Holiness and righteousness by your lifestyle. Amen. Let your life shine. Uh, uh, producing. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what God is after now. That's that practical living. You're producing something. Uh, you're growing fruit. Uh, evangelist Eric? Hey! Yes! So you walk into master this thing. Yes! It's consistent, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yes! And, um, when you talk about vocation, you never stop studying and walking in, in the truth and the word of God and in the implementation thereof. Yes! Absolutely! That's what he said. Walk worthy. That means live, walk worthy of the vocation where you've been called. Amen? And as you're walking in it, notice, he says the path of a just man gets brighter and brighter until a perfect day. Huh? That's, that's, that's the perfection. Amen? You've got to pursue after perfection. Amen? You've got to go after it to master uh, holiness. Uh, to master righteousness. Don't, don't just uh, uh, settle for mediocre. Amen. God does not want you to settle for mediocre. Why? Because he's able to do exceeding uh, and abundant uh, above all that you're able to ask for things. Uh, he doesn't want you to just have the crumbs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's why he was, he was, he was like marvel at the, at the woman. Hallelujah, the, the, the Syrophoenician woman who, who wanted her daughter healed. And Jesus says, you know, we can't give the dogs uh, the, 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 the meat uh, from, the, from, the, from the children's table. And then she said, yeah, Lord, but, 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 but you know, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Amen. Uh, she, she wouldn't take no for an answer. Amen. We can't take no for an answer. Amen. Hallelujah. If there's areas in our life that, that are not meeting up with the expectation of God, we should not take no for an answer. Amen? Why? Because, because he's, he's able. Uh, and, 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 and those lies, those areas that are not meeting the, his expectation, uh, uh, we should not just settle for that. Amen? We should not just settle for that. Uh, we, should, we should perfect this thing uh, in the beauty of holy dance. Amen. And, and, and what I'm saying, hallelujah, because God has established uh, and, and, and is backing his word. If we just line up with it and live with it, uh, as you walk uh, with God, he purges you. He cleanses you uh, from all unrighteousness. If you just stay in his way, uh, if you just walk in his way, hallelujah, he does the work. Uh, if you if you do the formula, he'll do the work. Yeah. It's not you that can save yourself. Uh, he saves you. He sanctifies you. He delivers you. Uh, but he's looking for your faithfulness. Uh, your faithfulness. Uh, your, your faithfulness. And then he'll do the work. 
Hallelujah. He'll manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He, and he tells us this. He says, he says, he says, after you have uh, uh, done all that you can, still consider yourself an unprofitable servant. Amen. And then he says, after you can do it all you can, he still has to impute uh, righteousness unto you. Uh, you, know, you can't do this on your own. Uh, you can't do this by yourself. Uh, he purified. He cleansed. Amen. But you got to walk in his way. Jesus, when he talked to his disciples, hallelujah, he said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Yes. Just your very showing up and listening to this Bible class, you get some stars. Yes. You get some points. Yes. Amen. You get a cleansing. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Yes. Thank you, Lord. It, it, it happens. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear your hand up? Oh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice what he said. Notice what he said. Let's, let me, let's hold that and go to uh, uh, Ephesians 4 and 1. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. I have my arm was all jacked up. My arm feeling better now. My God, I hope it continues when I leave this space. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, Ephesians 4 and 1. Hallelujah. Therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, uh -huh. beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. That's the scripture she, she was saying. And notice, before then, Paul was talking about doctrine. Yeah. Amen? And he enters in a, a therefore. Uh, now he's talking about practical living. Amen? And what's he say? Read. With all loneliness and now, meekness. Now notice, he's telling you how to walk worthy of your vocation. Yeah. Amen? And our theme tonight is transformation. Yeah. In order to be transformed, huh, you've got to walk with all what? All loneliness. All loneliness. And meekness. And what? Meekness. With long suffering. Long suffering. Forbearing one another in love. Forbearing, putting up with your brothers and sisters in love. Yes. Amen. That forbearing has the connotation of, of bearing their burden. In this sense, you see that they got issues, that's a burden. <laughs> and you bear it. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. You deal with it. You help them. Uh, and, this, and this relates to the productivity of your fruit. Amen? All right, read. What's it say? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now notice, you're endeavoring. That's, that's, that's the scripture where it's talking about you're, uh, uh, you're laboring. You're working toward it uh, to keep unity in, in the body of Christ, in the bond of peace. We talked that uh, a couple weeks ago. All right, read. There is one body uh -huh. and one Spirit. Yes. All right, now go to go to Colossians three and five. We we after something tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Practical living, transformation. Colossians three and five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Uh huh. Fornication. Uh huh. Uncleanness. Yes. Yes. Evil concupiscence. Yes. And covetousness. Yes. Which is idolatry. Uh -huh. Now notice, he's telling you to put to death those things. That's also part of practical living. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen? That's a part of practical living. Yeah. You follow me? That's the spiritual end of practical living. There's a natural end of practical living, and that's and that's what, what, what Ephesians 4 and 1 talks about. Walking worthy of the vocation. Yes. The, the spiritual practical end of, of transformation or holy living is what she just read. Read that again. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Uh-huh. Fornication. Fornication. 
uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Read. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So, 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 no, no. Disobedience refers to how one lives. Yeah. Amen. You can't live in disobedience and expect the blessings of God to come upon your life. If you're living in disobedience, what 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 is the expectation? Yes, Lord. The yes. wrath of God. Yes. Amen. Y'all with me? We're talking about practical living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, so, so on the spiritual end, yes, uh, and me coming to God, I gotta work on these things. Uh, 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 fornication. Uh, uh, what else? What was those? Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanliness, in order and affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is I I gotta work on those things. Amen. I can't practice those things. I gotta abstain from those things and walk in obedience to the word of God. Amen. We're talking about practical living. So when those things are presented to me. I reject them. Amen? When those things are presented to you, you reject them. Why? Because you want to be obedient. Because you want to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you've been called. Am I right? Now, let's go back over. Uh, that's why he said, I, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Because if, if you don't, if you don't, Walk in God's mercies and obtain the mercies of God and live by the mercies of God, then, then, then you're going to be left out there under the wrath of God. Yes, Lord. And you don't want that. Amen? I don't want God to get me. Amen? You don't want God to get you. When I'm saying get you, I'm talking about uh, 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 in, in his wrath, uh, his unbridled anger pouring out on us. We don't want that. Am I right? Hallelujah. So, so he says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, Lord. Amen? Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's, let's move on. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, read it. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, what Paul is going into now is talking about what God's desires are. Amen? We have to be in tune with God's desires. What does God desire of you? Amen? And are you, are you meeting the expectation of God's desires? I mean, God has some desires. Amen. That's why he gave us some great and precious promises because he has some desires. Amen. God has some desires which equate to his expectations. Amen. God expects something from us based on everything that he has done for us, to us, and through us. Amen. So he says, uh, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your bodies, what? As a what? Living, that's the first desire that God has for you in this, in this process of transformation. That, that you present your body to him uh, as a living sacrifice. Now, let me explain that. Uh, in the Old Testament, they offered God a dead sacrifice. They killed him. Am I right? Uh, and they offered him that sacrifice for their sin. In the New Covenant, we are buried with Christ Jesus. Amen? And, and been buried with him and raised up with him to do what? To walk how? In the newness of life. That's what God wants. God wants the newness of you. 
He doesn't want that old deadness of you. Uh, you living in your trespasses and sin. He doesn't want that life. Amen? Why? Because he dealt with that life in Christ Jesus. Y'all, I want y'all to hear me today. Y'all catch this. Y'all y'all be going some. Amen? He, he doesn't want that old lifestyle. You know, he wants that new lifestyle. Amen? Uh, if, you, if you give your child some, a new pair of shoes and uh, 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 some new clothes, and you put those old clothes in the garbage, am I right? Do you expect him to go back to the garbage? Uh, and get those old clothes and get them old shoes and start putting them on and wearing them, you expect him or her to wear those new clothes, Amen. those new garments. Amen? Uh, and that's what God expects from us. Uh, you, have, you have taken off those old garments and you have put on Christ. Yes. Amen? Uh, hallelujah. God expects you now to walk in that new and living way. Uh, that's his design. Follow? Uh, that's what he means by present your body as a living sacrifice. Amen? Your, your body, your actions, your deeds, who you are. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He doesn't want you to live that old lifestyle anymore. You should, he, that, that has done away with. That has been buried. Amen? And, and he raised you to walk now in the newness of life. That's what he wants. He wants your newness next. <laughs> Hallelujah. All, all old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. That's it. Any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Yes, Lord. Amen. And that's what God wants. Amen. Amen. Your newness. So he says, he says, present your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. Now, you have to uh, 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 come to God alive, filled with the Holy Ghost, anointed, baptized in Jesus' name, amen, and, and present yourself to him uh, as, as a living sacrifice. Now, God wants your, 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 your lifestyle to be a sacrifice unto him. Amen? To be a sacrifice unto him. Everything you do, he wants you to be a sacrifice unto him. Amen? You've been bought with a price. Huh? You are not your own. Huh? You belong to God. Huh? If Jesus is your Lord, he said, why callest thou me Lord and doeth not the things that I say? Amen? You're a servant unto the Lord. Oh, you my God. Uh, it is good to be a servant unto the Lord. Amen. It's good to give your life uh, unto the Lord and be a servant of him. Because in the end, he's going to say, well done, uh, thy good and faithful servant. Uh, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. He says, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Notice what he says. Uh, 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 holy and acceptable unto God. Now that's the second and the third. He wants you to live uh, 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 a lifestyle that is sacrificial unto him. That means humbling yourself <laughs> beneath the mighty hand of God. Walking in his ways, not leading to your own understanding, but acknowledging him so that he can direct your path. Amen? And he wants you to do it in a holy way. Yes. Uh, with, that, that goes back to a lifestyle living with him without sin. Huh? He doesn't want you to go back and dabble into sin. God never expected you to go dabble back into sin. He made provision for you if you did sin, huh? but he never desired huh, for you to go back. Huh? Never desired that. That was never in God's expectation. Amen? He never wanted that. So he wants you to live holy. Now, let me, let me help you here, Holy Ghost. We, when we get into the body of Christ, a lot of us 
especially when we first get in, and I'm guilty of it myself when I first came into the body. What can I do to get away with it? Huh? What can I do huh, to please my flesh and not get out of the will of God? Huh? That's what we do. Huh? We look for the loopholes. Huh? We look for the ins and the outs. Huh? Huh? We do that. Thank you, Lord. We're, we should only be focused on holiness huh? and righteousness. Huh? Now, if you're, if you're focused on that, then that takes your eye off a of seat. Amen? That, that takes you uh, uh, away from the temptation of the devil. Huh? When you focus on what God says and, and what, what God loves and, and, and only focus on that, because that's what he wants. He wants you to only focus on him. Huh? Not, not, not what the world is doing. Not what you can get away with, but Lord, Lord, uh, uh, I'm going to drink of the cup uh, of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Uh, he wants you to be done with the world. He wants you to be done with evil and done with wickedness and not only done with that, but focused on him. What does the scripture say? Set your affections uh, on things above uh, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. That's where my desire should be. 100%. Uh, 100%. And, and when my own desire Brother Cain. Y'all remember Brother Cain? 
Thank you, Lord. That was Abel's brother. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Mother and father, Adam and Eve. Y'all yeah. <laughs> well, remember them, don't you? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They, and and they, there was a family. Huh? Uh, but, but the one brother, uh, God, God required something of them. Yeah. He required a sacrifice yeah. of them. Amen. Same like last with us. God requires something of us. A sacrifice of us. Abel, huh, he gave God what he required. Yes, he did. Amen? Cain failed and did not. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Huh? And, and God didn't cast him away. Huh? God, God came to him and said, if thou doest well, huh, won't you be accepted? Yeah. And, and that's what he's saying to us today. Huh? If you do well, won't you be accepted? If you do things my acceptable way, won't you be accepted? Huh? God just doesn't take any and everything. Huh? Well, you know why? Because he brought you out. He cleaned you up. Huh? Huh? He established your way. Am I right? Huh? And you chose to walk with him. You surrendered your life unto him. Huh? Those of us that have the Holy Ghost up in here, hallelujah, we, we made a promise. We made a vow huh? that you would live for him. Amen? You confessed it. Huh? You believed on it. Huh? And then he sealed you with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. Huh? He accepted you. Huh? Hallelujah. And he became your Lord. You became his servant. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now, I'm talking about transformation. I'm talking about transformation. Now, notice what he said. He said, he said, uh, uh, holy and acceptable unto God. Cain failed to give God what was acceptable. Right? God gave him another opportunity to give to him what was acceptable. Cain got smart with God. Huh? Refused to, to, to give God what he wanted. And in the end, he was rejected. Yep. Amen? Huh? King Saul. Saul called an anointed of God. Huh? And, and God being, being, being his king and, and Saul, huh? to my King Saul, was the servant of God. He failed. Huh? He failed to do the bidding of God yeah. huh? and was, was given another opportunity but failed again and was rejected. Yes. Amen? God is showing us a pattern huh? that, that, that you have to do things acceptable in order to be, it to be received of God. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Amen? And you have to find out what does God require of thee. Amen. You got to find out what, what, what God is requiring and what is acceptable unto him. I feel like one of the old time bishops in the old pulpit now. <laughs> huh? You, you got you to get into that. Amen. And find out how to please your God. Amen. And I'm going to say this. That, that, that every God you serve You've got to please them, whether it be the devil, or whether it be the God of your belly, or whether it be the God Jehovah. Huh? You've got to know and look how to please them and serve them. Amen? And you, and you offer to any God that you serve a sacrifice. Amen? And God wants you to offer up his sacrifice acceptable unto him. Amen? Hallelujah. And if we search the Old Testament scripture, as we get ready to move into this, he's really, let, let's move into that. He said, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable servant. That God is, is looking at you now as a priest huh, in his kingdom. Huh, as, as, as you serve him. Amen. You serve him in the order of a priest uh, in his kingdom. And you, sat, you offer sacrifices unto him. 
Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and. What God relayed and is relating here, he says, which is your reasonable service, he's literally saying that I called you, I sanctified you, and I've given you a work to do in my kingdom. A lot of people don't operate in what God has called them to do. They, 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 they look at it as, well, I'm just here, I come to church, I, 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 I give my tithes and my offering, but, but, but what are you working in? What are you doing in God's kingdom? That's the service, amen? And you've got to operate as a priest huh, in God's kingdom providing a service, amen? A service. God wants you to work in his kingdom. He has given us all the ministry of reconciliation, amen? And so we should be operating. Huh? We should be performing duties and tasks huh? in the kingdom of God. If, if, let me say this. Let me say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're in the kingdom. Am I right? And we are employed by God. Am I right? We are in his government. Am I right? People that are operating in a government, they're given a government job. Amen? And if they don't do the government job that they were called to do, then they get fired. Am I right? We are in God's kingdom. Huh? And he is, and we are government employees of God, given assignments. He gave you gifts. He gave you callings. Amen? To work and to operate in his government, in his kingdom, to provide a service to his subjects. Huh? The state of Pennsylvania, those people are hired to provide a service to Pennsylvanians. Amen. We are given a job to provide service to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen? Y'all with me? Uh, I can't make it any plainer than that. That's what he's talking about is your reasonable service. Yeah. God has given you an assignment. Amen? And you've got to carry out your assignment. Amen? You gotta work in his kingdom. Hallelujah. You gotta work. You gotta, you gotta work in his kingdom. You can't not work in his kingdom. Huh? You, gotta, you gotta perform a service, an action, what he's called you to do, what he's anointed you to do, the gifts that he's given unto you. Amen? He knows your several ability. Hallelujah. And he's blessed you according to your several ability. Huh? Hallelujah. And his gifts and his callings are without repentance. He won't call them back. Hallelujah. When he gives you a talent, just like he gave that one, uh, 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 gave one, I think it was five talents, gave the other two talents, then gave the other one talent. Amen? The one in his talent. Huh? In his talent. You don't want to hide your talent. Amen? You want to work in your talent. You want to work in your ministry. You want to work in the area that God has assigned you to. Amen? That's your reasonable service for what he has done for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's your reasonable service. Amen? Because you're a servant of God. Amen? You're his priest. Amen? To operate in, in his kingdom, to offer up spiritual sacrifices and labor unto him. Amen? To build his kingdom. Amen? He called you. He gave you a job description. He gave you an assignment. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and you know, death won't excuse you because you got to do it before you die. Amen? Hallelujah. You got to do it. And, and, and saying, Lord, I'm afraid. I ain't going to get it. Say, Lord, I'm too old. Moses put time to do that. That didn't work. Am I right? Uh, Jeremiah uh, said I was too young. That didn't work. Am I right? Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. God has called you and anointed you for service. Uh, Brother David? Uh, uh, you and I was talking about a gift of mine, and I was saying how I had, you know, been particular like the gift. Yeah. What if wow. I don't perform 
what, what happens to me if I decide, well, God gave me this gift, and I don't want to do it, so I'm not going to do it. What happens between me and God concerning me? Yeah, then uh, God, you, you're not pleasing God, and, it, and it's, you're not uh, acceptable unto him. And, and God, as whatever happens, is between you and God, but he's not going to be pleased with that. And, and literally, if I could be honest, it's, it's like putting your own salvation on the line. Right. You know, because God has anointed you for a particular call and a particular purpose. And he does it, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, he doesn't ask us if we like it. You know, uh, he, he gives it to us to perform. All right. Amen. Because right. that's, that's what he wants us to do. That's our assignment. Thank you, Jesus. My God, that's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you. Amen? Thank you. That's what that scripture means. It says, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, God, God, God wants you to serve him. Amen? In the assignments that he has given unto you. That's what he's called you for. That's what we should seek after. We belong to him. You've been bought with a price. Amen? Now notice, notice then. Notice. Read that verse. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, read the second verse. And be not conformed to this world. Uh-huh. Now notice, God has desires for us, and we ought to pursue uh, to fulfill the desires that God has for us. Read that verse again, Pastor. And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now notice, in order to accomplish, <laughs> my God, hallelujah, uh, all of verse number one. <laughs> Y'all see where I'm going? In order to accomplish all of that, you cannot be conformed to this world. Amen. Amen? Amen. This, this world is opposite from the, the kingdom of God. Amen? Jesus, when his disciples won a promotion, he said, that's what the Gentiles seek out. Uh, he said, those that are going to be promoted uh, uh, in my kingdom, I'm paraphrasing, it's going to be yourself. <laughs> you follow me? It's going to follow after. Amen? It's not going to be like the world. Amen? So, 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 so now he's talking about a mentality. You can't uh, bring over worldly principles into the kingdom of God. Amen? Uh, uh, neophytes do that. People, what I mean by that, neophytes, is people that, that, don't, that are unlearned, unskilled, untrained, that have not been transformed. They do that. They see something going on in the world, say, oh, that's, oh, that's a good idea. Let me try it over here in the kingdom. Huh? That's, that, that's, that's, if you ever looked at God, God rejected everything that came out of the world. Everything. Amen? And, 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 and you know, one verse of scripture that always, that always, that always got me concerning that was, uh, when God, when God gave Moses the, 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 the formula on how to make uh, the anointed oil, yeah. right? He said, you use these ingredients and, and those that try to uh, substitute for it, 
Uh, reject it. You know, God does not want a substituted anointing. Amen. You can't shout like the world. <laughs> uh, you can't sing like the world. Uh, you can't live like the world over here in holiness. Conformity. Amen. I was, uh, don't forget it. I was at a convocation and he said it over the pulpit. It was Bishop, ah oh, man, what's his name? Jesus. I see his face. It was the old presiding bishop. D. Rayford Bell. And, and the lady sung a beautiful song. It was beautiful. It's a convocation. There were thousands of people there. Beautiful song. Huh? And after she got done singing, they turned the mic over to him. He said, now that was a beautiful song, but had no anointing. <laughs> oh, the whole room. The whole room. I ain't saying that was a good thing to do, but 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 it didn't. It didn't have no anointing. <laughs> Nothing in it. I ain't saying that his actions were good. You know, he could have had some tact. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pulled her aside and talked to him. But he put it out there. Uh, and, 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 and you know, I was there. And she was, you know, singing like the world. You can't live a lifestyle like the world and, and, and expect the anointing to follow. Amen. Amen? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that we rebuke people like that on the pulpit, you know what I mean? But, but my point is, it had no anointing. Amen? You can't be like the world and expect to have anointing. Don't work like that. Am I right? And notice, he said, be not conformed to what? This world. He's talking about this world's age. The age that you're living in. It changes, doesn't it? So, so he expects you never to be conformed to this world's age, to whatever's going on. Amen? Be original. <laughs> Follow the original. <laughs> Follow the original G-O-D. <laughs> you follow? This world age changes. And if we change it all the time, the Bible says Jesus Christ is what? The same. Yesterday and forever. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, notice. Notice what he said. Read. What's he say? And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, when he's talking about transformation, he's literally talking about a metamorphosis which represents a total change. People should know you no longer after your old life. Amen? And literally he's saying your old way of living should never creep up in your new way of living. Never. Amen? I talk to drug dealers and, and, and they, they, you know, give their life over to Christ, get saved, the money stop. Right? And when the money stop, they always looking back. Huh? Tricking the enemy. Huh? Uh, what, what, whatever entices us. Huh? God never wants you to look back. Huh? You got familiar spirits that follow you all the time, trying to pull you back. Amen? Don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look back. God always wants you to look ahead. Amen? Only time that you should look back is for a testimony. To see where God has brought you from. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. Amen. You got to forget about that old lifestyle. 
That old way of living. Amen? Literally. Am I right? Forget about that. Huh? Forget about that. Huh? I'm, I'm a new creature. Huh? My, my new way of living. I got a new way of thinking. I got a new way of talking. I got a new family. Amen? I'm a part of a new household of faith. Am I right? Huh? Huh? And, and people that don't get rid of the old lifestyle, they'll always present itself as an occasion to return. That's the same thing. It's a total change. You follow me? Total change. Turning from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. Total change. And, and God knows that it's a process. But let me say this. This, this, this ain't deep, but this is, this, is, this is good information. He knows it is a process, but he don't expect you to, 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 to dibble and dabble while you're going through the process. Amen. Amen. He's giving you power to resist. Amen. He's giving you power in the anointing to resist. Uh, and, and the more you resist, 
is, is how you overcome. When you still give it in to it, you'll never overcome it. But when you make up in your mind, enough is enough, then you overcome. Amen? That's what God expects. That's what God expects. Yeah, yeah he knows that we weak and, and yeah, he knows that we're gonna have we're gonna have some stumbles. He knows that. Huh? And he don't want us to give up the ship when we do. Huh? But 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 what he wants, notice. He said, be not conformed, but be transformed. Here it is. By the renewing of your mind. He wants your mind to be renewed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Which is your intellect. Amen. Huh? Get some knowledge. <laughs> and then, then he wants to renew your will. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Huh? Renew your will, which relates to your desires. Yeah. Amen? Make them godly. Amen? Desire godly things. Desire holy things. Yes, Amen? In your daily walk with him. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, your emotions. Uh -huh. He wants you, you always going to have emotions. Uh, but he wants your emotions to, to, to be godly. Yes. Amen? To carry out your emotions in a godly way. Yeah. Even your anger. He wants you to, to control your anger. Yeah. Amen? He does. He wants you to control your desires. Yeah. Amen? But the Holy Ghost wants you to control it. Amen? Thank you. Everything about you, he wants you to control and manage until you overcome it. Yes, Lord. Amen? And, and as you control it, and as you manage it, you're overcoming it. Huh? God is giving you grace. God is giving you mercy. God is renewing you. He's restoring you. Amen? Uh, but, but, but you've got to cease from sin. Huh? You got to lay aside every weight. Amen? You can't, you can't walk in and be given into it and, and then be transformed. It won't happen. Huh? It's, it's a setback. Huh? Paul said, he said, who have bewitched you? <laughs> huh? In the book of Galatians. Huh? Huh? Who have bewitched you? Huh? He said, you did run well, but who hindered you? Huh? A lot of times we hinder ourselves huh, by giving in to our, our proclivities, our evil desires, and not allowing the, the word of God to transform us. Now, let me say this, because this is, this is vital. You can study this word, and the word can get in your heart, but the transformation doesn't happen until you practice it. Yes. Let me say that again. The transformation doesn't happen until you practice it. Yeah. You can quote it backwards and frontwards, yeah. but until you practice it, that's when transformation happens. Yeah. Amen? That's when renewal happens. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Never, never come to a place in your life where you're ever learning and never knowing nothing. You follow? Me? Uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn it, practice it, so you'll know it. Gotta know this. Thing. And and, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Can I be honest? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why I keep saying that. Cause I always try to be honest. <laughs> but but my point is this is the stage I am in my life now in my walk with the Lord uh -huh. it's impossible for an individual to tell me Jesus is not real mm -hmm. Come on, man. Come on. if you try to tell me Jesus ain't real I say you're a fool yeah. uh, I, 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 tune my, I tune out I wouldn't even be listening to you uh, you can't you can't tell me that Jesus is not coming back. Come on. Come on. Huh? You follow? Yes, sir. Because, 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 as, as we say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. 
I've experienced some things with the Lord. I've seen some things with the Lord. He's told me some things were going to happen, and they happened. <laughs> you know, confirming the word of the Lord in my heart. He said, then shall you know if you follow on. Uh, and as you follow on, your, your hope gets more secure. Uh, as you follow on, your faith gets more soft. Uh, your desires uh, become more clear and purposeful. Uh, Tribulation work of patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. And he says, hope make it not a shame because the love of God. That's what's in my heart. Huh? The love of God. That's what should be in your heart. Huh? And it shed abroad in it. Not, not, not by a little portion, but it shed abroad in it. Huh? By the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You follow? There's certain things we should come to know about the Lord. Yeah. I was in a I was in a I was in a counseling session. I'm a, oh God, I gotta wrap this up. We're talking about transformation. I was in a counseling session and 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 the individual was telling me about uh, thus saith the word of God. Yeah. And and how God is and yeah. what God did. If I were to tell you, you'd probably crack up and laugh. And 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 I said, I said, I said, no, that's not that was not God. And that's not how God operates. And if I were to say what the person said, y'all all here would agree with me. And uh uh Person never came back. Rejected everything that I said. But my point in telling you this is, is that when you get to know him, you know he doesn't act ungodly or unseemly. And God will never violate his own word and his own will. That's what the individual was saying. Huh? That, that God was, was, was getting ready to do for her or did for her in her life. Violated his will. I said, no, that ain't God. That ain't God. Never came back. Never came back. I left my door. But, 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 but the point is, Transformation, total change, the renewing of the mind. In order for your mind to be renewed, I want y'all to hear me, is, is, it doesn't just come in knowing the word, it comes in knowing it and practicing it. You gotta put the two together. And you've got to be, as Paul said, steadfast. Unmovable. Huh? Then you're always abounding in the work of the Lord. Notice what he says. Notice what he says that we've done. He said, and be not conformed to this world. Read. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you gotta get your mind renewed. Read. That you may prove what is that good. So, so, so what God is saying is, is that God wants you to live for him so that you can prove to everybody yes. what is that good yes. uh, and acceptable and complete will of God. Yes. Amen? God wants you to, to prove that. And in order for you to prove that, you've got to be able to resist temptation, resist the evil, and do the good. So that, so that God can prove 
to everyone that's watching you that he's good. good. So that God can prove that when you do the acceptable thing, huh? when you live an acceptable life, God will bless you. Huh? You follow? That's what he wants you to prove. Huh? He wants you to, he wants you to, he wants people to know what is his perfect will. Notice the responsibility on us. God wants us to perform his perfect will. And the only way to do it is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you got to know God's word and do it. Huh? And the only way to know God's word and do it, you got to present your body as a living sacrifice. Uh, holy and acceptable of God uh, and, and perform your reasonable services. You follow? All right. We thank God for Father's Day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God's word is good. Those that want to give uh, through our electronic giving, you may do so, and we thank God for you. Kindly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.